Ready to go. Okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. Today, we're working on a little Toro lawnmower that has an unusual problem. It'll start okay, but it won't stop. When you let go of the kill bale, it continues to run. If you play with the mechanism, it eventually stops. Now, I originally thought it was a cable, but I checked it, and the cable seems to be working good, and the mechanism is operating. It just doesn't shut it down. So this might be a minor little adjustment. So let's get a look at her and see what we've got. So now if you watch, you can see as I operate it, you can see the mechanism here is working, which tells me the cable's okay. And the cable looks pretty good. The whole mower looks pretty good. There's just no telling what might be dead on it. So let's pull the lid off and see what we can see. Okay, the way the shutoff works on one of these mowers is there's this little wire that grounds to the coil, which gives the spark a different direction to go, and that shuts it down. And you've got a little contact here that when you hold it like this, you can see this is the end, and it doesn't touch. And when I look at this, I can see this moving. So this tells me, you can see the flex right here. And that, that tells me that our main, our main culprit here is dirt. Let's get a little piece of sandpaper and clean it up real quick. Okay, we'll take our bale. There's an unusual amount of dirt on this. Let's see if that takes care of it. I'm going to lower her down and start her. Let me get you out of the firing range. Now I've got to put the cover back on because, well, that's where our starter is. But it comes on and off easy, so not a big deal. It looks like we dropped a screw here somewhere. So we'll find that screw in a minute. Let's see if she starts. Okay. Let's see if she starts and let's see if she stops. Let's pull the cover off and have another look at her. Gotta find the missing screw for it too. That's what happens when you don't use a magnet. And let's look a little bit closer. Now we've got a lot of dirt everywhere on this. So let's pull the wire. And have a better look at her. Okay, let's pull out the extra junk out of here. Okay, I don't see anything out of place in this. Now, the wire was tucked underneath rather than going through the hole here where it's supposed to. And that could be the problem. That seems unlikely. See, that's how you want it to sit on yours. So let's give it another run and see if having the wire in the correct place takes care of it. There we go. 
Lucky for us, these lids go on and off really easy. Okay, let's give her a run, see how she works. And that was it. There was a wire in the wrong place. It was placed incorrectly and it was not getting good contact. So, let's move over to the carburetor and give her a quick cleanup. This is about the same as the EX motor. Oh, for practical purposes, it is an EX motor. What we want to do is take the lid off first and get it out of our way. And now we'll be able to get to this a little bit more easily. Hmm. Invisible air filter. We'll fix that. Now this uses a 516th on these outside and the 930 of all things on the inside. You almost never have a 930 bit. And these are the screws that actually hold the carburetor in place on this one. Okay, so let's pull our air filter off. Or our lack of an air filter in this case. And we've got our magnet out so we don't lose any screws. Well, let's ease it out. Okay, now we're going to cut the fuel line. I've already drained the fuel on this one. So we'll only get a drip or two. And the fuel line's all sorts of in your way when you're doing this one. And we're gonna roll it off the top linkage and roll it off the bottom linkage and we got a carburetor. Let's take it over the bench and get her cleaned up. So first thing we'll do is pull the bowl off. A lot of people don't like these carburetors because they're very, very, very different from what you would call a quote-unquote normal carburetor, partially because they're plastic. Okay, let me empty this out. This is where the jets are on one of these. And getting one to let go is pretty easy. Get something in there and Ouija it, and it'll pop right off. And there's your jets. Once we get this part cleaned up, she should run great. We're going to go ahead and run the whole thing through the bath, just as is, and it'll run better. Now that we've got everything all nice and shiny clean, let's go ahead and clean the jets up. Now this is floral wire that I got from Dollar Tree or Walmart or something, and it works better than anything I've found. You might see people drill the jets out on these, but that's always a bad idea. Because what will happen is you'll get more fuel than the engine's designed to use if you drill the jets out. Now you see all I'm doing is I'm going in the little holes on these and I'm clearing a path out. Now I'll blow these holes out with the uh, air gun and we're done. These, nothing ever sticks in these, but it doesn't hurt to inspect anyway. Yeah, the jets look pretty good on this. Once we get this together, we'll throw a new spark plug on it, throw an air filter on it, and we're done. Now note when you put this in, that if you try to put it in backwards like this, it won't work. So don't force it. It should go all the way to the seat, and then just ease it in. Just push gently. And that's that. Okay, this is the most fiddly part of one of these for me, is that little pin will fall out real easily. So putting this back together can be, that can be funny. Gently slide her back in place. I'll try to keep everything lined up so nothing falls off. And there we go. And these just click in once it's lined up right. So 
there's one side, there's the other side. And there you have it. And usually with this point, what I'll do, make sure there's no pressure on that and there's not. I'll blow, I'll blow on this and open it and close it. And it's working correctly. Let's put our ball back on and we're done. We've got a happy carburetor. Okay, that looks ridiculously good. Just ridiculously good. And remember, don't tighten those too terribly tight because it's the rubber O-ring that's giving you the seal. And see how nice and clean everything looks now? That's pine saw and nothing else. Make sure that everything's operating correctly. And it is, because you want to make sure when you've done this that no little pieces of dirt get caught in here, which force that to stick. Okay, it looks real good. Let's put her back on. Now, as you can see, we've already put a new fuel line on this one. And it gave me something to do while I was waiting. So now we're going to go in the same order that we took it apart. We're going to do the larger top one first. Now we're going to thread in this one. And if you took pictures, this part's pretty easy. If you didn't take pictures, well, good luck. I'll ease everything into place. Now that we've got it down here, shove our new fuel line on. This is going to fight us a little bit because it's brand new line. It'll fight us a little less if I get this clamp out of the way. There we go. And that's pretty good. I'll ease everything back into place gently. Make sure everything lines up right. And you'll feel restriction from the fuel line itself, but that's expected. There we go. Now she's eased in over her O-ring. Let's put our clamp back on our fuel line and put a cover back on. The reason I replace the fuel line every time is because when you get one of these, if something gets caught in the float, it's entirely possible it's part of the fuel line. Okay, let's put the cover back on. Notice I'm being very gentle and taking my time. Because if you get something out of alignment and try to force it, in this case you're pushing a screw into plastic. Oh, get back under there. There you go. And that should do it. Okay, let's switch bits for the other screws. And it's just a matter of putting the cover on, putting some fuel in it, and she should run good. She still needs an air filter. I don't have one of those. We probably should have wiped that off before we put it back on. Let's wipe it off real quick. Okay, that's the part where the clean air goes, so that's what we need. 
Let's put the lid back on and give her a run. Nope, not quite. There we go. Okay, now Bruce would start this up on the rack just like that. And we did do it that way earlier. But I don't have quite the faith in the rack that he's got. So we're going to put it on the floor and start it up. Now she starts a little odd, but she does run pretty good. So we'll put a new spark plug in it, get the air filter on it, and that should take care of everything. That little Toro came up pretty good. Now I have a feeling that this one was tinkered with just a little bit because the wire being underneath rather than over the retainer seems unlikely. It doesn't seem like it had come from the factory that way. And cleaning up the carburetor, well, cleaning up the carburetor and putting a new plug in always helps. Well, thanks for watching. And for all you new people, you made it this far, you might as well subscribe. We'll see you next time.